Hi, I'm Steve Garvey. You're about to see some of America's finest athletes at home, in training, and in competition. Our program was filmed across a vast band of our great country, in big cities and in some towns you've never heard of before. These athletes are among the very best at what they do in our United States, and their dedication to being the very best in the world is inspiring to me, and I hope to you. This, then, is a story of values placed on athletic achievement by those who have dedicated themselves to excellence. These are America's Athletes, 1980. In the hills outside Indianapolis, the cycling Stetna family consistently breaks the posted speed limit. I've been clocked at over 70 miles an hour so speed. You're traveling as fast or faster than cars on an interstate, and you have to take all the turns absolutely as fast as you can take them. This is the Stetna family of Indiana, everyone a bicycling champion. Troy is 15 and still in junior high school. Dale is 22 and an Olympian. Joel is 19 and a rookie on the senior circuit. Their father, Roy Stetna, is a former national champion. But Wayne is the star of the family. He is a Pan Am gold medalist, a three-time national title holder, and hopes to carry the family banner to the Olympics for a third time. I would have never heard about bike racing if it hadn't been for my father. He was one of the top cyclists in the country right uh, before and after World War II, and he won a national championship race in 1953, the year I was born. Roy Stetna doesn't think bikes are toys, so he introduced Wayne to cycling relatively late. When Wayne first started riding, he was about 12 years old, I guess. But prior to that, I had got him involved in running and cross country and uh, swimming. And he was an excellent speed skater. I taught him how to speed skate. He went riding, but I had no idea he would go this far. And the further he, he went, it seemed, the more encouraged he was to go further. Wayne has since proved himself in such tough competitions as the Red Zinger Classic in Colorado. Nine days of racing at distances from 40 to 100 miles. The name of the game is to ride more easily than everyone you're racing against so that you conserve energy while they use it more than you do. When a sprinter follows right behind the distance rider, he saves a lot of energy and is actually resting while the rider in front is getting more tired. If a sprinter does stay with me to the end of the race, I can hope that I can sucker him into making the wrong move or going a little bit too early. The 79 Red Zinger Championship team featured both Wayne and Dale. Wayne is a really nice teammate. He's fair with uh, helping me out when I help him out in the race. It's necessary that each of us reciprocate so that we can not be mistrustful or uh, covetous of uh, each other's successes. World-class bicycle racing is work. Hard, unrelenting work. I imagine I ride about 15,000 miles a year. As you build up, your training mileage and you start racing, your body gradually adjusts and I think your mind adjusts to a great extent and you don't realize how grueling it is. You just do it. For me, the real enjoyment of riding a bike is the, the feeling of speed that you get. It's really exhilarating to be able to go along at uh, maybe 30 miles an hour on a level road under your own power. The hardest for me is um, climbing in the mountains where it's just um, lifting your weight uphill. It's just strength to weight and that's all there is to it. I'm working out 45 minutes to an hour every other day just mainly power and especially upper body power because it's beneficial for sprinting and for uh, 
fast acceleration, but you don't necessarily develop that type of power just riding a bicycle. Moral support comes from Mother Janice Stetna, no stranger to the sport. I was a state champion myself in Ohio, and I have mixed emotions when Wayne and Dale are riding in Olympic events because I'm hurting on the bike with them mentally. I guess it looks more like a Chinese problem to get those bikes in there. Wayne's wife, Barbara, thinks more about safety than championships. In some of Wayne's big races where there are mountain descents or wild corners, I try not to be standing at that position. I'd rather not see the, the high speed. It does bother me because there is quite a bit of danger. The Olympic race is some 120 miles. Roy Stetna knows it's a grind. Bike racing is as strenuous as channel swimming or marathon running, except they go twice as long as the marathon runner. Pain doesn't exist if you're really concentrating on what you're doing. It's there, but you push it out of your mind. You're just thinking about what you have to do during a bike race. It's just critical that you eat and drink quite a bit. So I may drink as much as two gallons of water, usually with maybe a little bit of glucose, and I'll eat a lot of fruit. Diet is a very important part of your training. It really can't be separated. Now the father of a six-month-old baby girl, Wayne and Barbara have settled down in Cherville, Indiana, where Wayne is a sales representative for a large food conglomerate. They're participating in the Olympic Committee's job opportunity program to give athletes a job where they do real work during the off season and build up a, a possible career for the future but then get uh, time off with pay to compete okay i'll take care a situation that allows wayne to train full-time half the year during the season very often i think that uh, why am i doing this i really don't need to be going through all this hassle but then you ride well in a few races or you you see a, a new country that you've never seen before and you think maybe this is really worthwhile. I have a feeling that I'll be racing until I can't win anymore. I'm not worried about qualifying because I've been an extremely consistent rider for the last eight years since I made the 1972 Olympic team. But I don't know what is going to happen when they put 300 of the top riders in the world on a starting line. At least two of them, Stetnes, 